Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to learn to trust your, you more day by day and never doubt that you care about us. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Matthews, chapter 4, verse 5 through 7. That's Matthews, chapter 4, verse 5 through 7. And I'm reading from the New International Version. It reads, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Verse 7 says, Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Now, our subject for today is uh, dealing with the second temptation, and let's choose for a subject Trusting our Heavenly Father, trusting our Heavenly Father from the uh, second temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, verses 5 through 7 of the fourth chapter of Matthew. Now, the second temptation was even more subtle than the first that we looked at last week. Last week, Satan tried to tempt Jesus to use his power for his own personal purpose. Jesus reminded him and us in this day and age that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God breathes and his word comes forth. His word is the result of him breathing. When God says something to us, breathed on us through his word, he expects a result of his breathing. God breathed into mankind and we became living souls. And our lives are uh, the result of God breathing. This sermon makes it plain that we must rightly divide the word of truth. We must be careful not to add to or take away from God's word. This week, Satan also used the words of word of God, and this is paraphrasing it, says, he says, so you intend to believe, uh, uh, you intend to live by the scripture. Is that what he implied? Then let me quote you a verse of scripture, and he said, if you, and let's see if you will obey it. This is Satan's intent. Satan took the Lord to uh, the, the pinnacle of the temple, probably about 500 feet above the Kidron Valley. And Satan then quoted Psalms uh, 91, verse 11 and 12, where God promised to care for his own. Those verses, Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12, here's the English Standard Version. It reads, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. If you really believe the scripture, then jump. That sounds like something uh, Satan has probably said to all of us. Then jump if you really believe the scripture. Let's see if the Father cares for you. Remember now, we are invited by God to cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. Now notice carefully our Lord Jesus Christ's reply. He says, it is written again. Verse seven, Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And we must never divorce one part of scripture from another. But we must always compare spiritual things with spiritual things, uh, which is the word of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. And we can prove almost anything by the Bible if we isolate text 
from the context and turn them into pretext. Pretext is a reason given in justification of a course of action that is not the real reason. Again, pretext that Satan often uses is a reason given in justification of a course of action that is not the real reason. Satan had clearly omitted the phrase, in all thy ways when he quoted Psalm 91. When the child of God is in the will of God, the father will protect him or her. He watches over those who are in his way, in his will. Jesus replied with Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. He said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And we tempt God when we put ourselves into circumstances that forces him to work miracles on our behalf. For instance, a diabetic who refuses to take insulin and argues, Jesus will take care of me, that may be tempting the Lord. A person that sees a nice car on an automobile dealership for a lot, and just and, and, and convinces himself that the Lord is going to make a way for him to get that car or her. And they go and sign all of the papers and go home and then realize on their way into the driveway, the car was not what it looked like. It's what it seemed to be. There were problems that he could not see. We tempt God when we try to force him to contradict his own word. It's important for us as believers to read all scripture and study all that God has to say, for all of it is profitable for our daily living. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, the Living Bible version says, the whole Bible was given by inspiration from God and is useful to uh, teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It strengthens us and it straightens us out and helps us to do what is right. It is God's way of making us well prepared at every point, fully equipped to do good to everyone. Now probably Satan wanted Jesus to demonstrate his trust in God in a spectacular way to challenge God's faithfulness. He misapplied the scripture when he quoted Psalms, the Psalm, Psalm 91 passage uh, refers to anyone who trusts in God, in essence. The, the certain, that, that certainly applies to Jesus and us. Have you ever felt like Satan was on your case uh, trying to trip you up more than somebody else? Maybe that's because you are trying to follow God's will, live according to his word. The verse promised that angels would uphold such a person as a nurse would who holds up a baby, like a mother like a father who holds their child in their arms. And you can find more on that in Numbers chapter 11, verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 31, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 32, and Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. God had revealed himself most particularly at the temple throughout Israel's history. And therefore, what better place could there have been to demonstrate the Son of God's confidence in his Father's promise? Jesus refused Satan's suggestion in verse 7 because the scripture prohibited putting God to a test, not because he questioned God's faithfulness to his promise. Satan tempted Jesus to test God. And Satan was tempting Jesus to act as if God was there to serve him rather than the other way around. 
So often we act that same way because of Satan, following Satan's suggestion. Most of the time, I don't think we even realize it. Israel had faced the same test and had failed it, according to Exodus chapter 17, verse 2 through 7, and Numbers chapter 20, verse 1 through 13. You can read that when you have time. I don't have time to cover all of those verses right now. It is wrong to demand that God prove himself faithful to his promise by giving us what he has promised us on our terms. The proper procedure is simply to trust and obey God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16 and 17 tells us that it's proper to simply trust and obey God. Now, testing is not trusting. Can I say that again? Testing is not trusting. Jesus refused to allow Satan to apply a valid promise because the use of it contradicted another teaching in God's word. On the other hand, or also has the sense of not contradicting, but qualifying. So we must be careful. Jesus, as a man, voluntarily under the authority of God's word, proved to be faithful uh, to its inspired uh, spirit as well as to its letter. Jesus proved to be faithful to its spirit as well as to the letter. Our trust in God is showing how readily we trust his word, the Bible. The Bible should have uh, should be seen as a moral defense that we can carry with us always into battle. There's a story about an English, uh, uh, a uh, man named Oliver Cromwell of England years ago, who was an English general and statement who first, according as, first as a subordinate and then later as the commander in chief led armies of the parliament of England against King Charles I during the English Civil War. This story is, is, is it really hits the point. Crom Cromwell had in his army one regiment, a fine regiment, strong, and it was a strong regiment, and they were called the Ironsides. They were very religious men. They were committed to the Lord. And it was the custom for almost every soldier to carry his Bible into battle with him. They used to carry their Bibles under their coats. And more than once in a battle, the soldier would have been shot through the heart except for his Bible. The bullet went through his Bible, or it would have gone through his heart. The Bible saved the heart. God's word saves us from the danger that we are headed unto. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, the English Standard Version says, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith which you, with which you can ex extinguish all of the flaming darts of the evil one. And then 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 14, the message version says, friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner. If you're abused because of Christ, count yourself fortunate. It's the spirit of God and his glory in you that brought you to the notice of others. The devil may suggest that we do things that are usually, uh, that usually end in disobeying God or costing us our lives, but he can never compel us. That's important to know. He can suggest, but he can never compel us. Satan's power is limited, 
and he must submit to God's control. He's required to even uh, receive permission from God before he can afflict us. And life requires that we are led by God to be tempted. But he can't touch us until God gives him permission. Hello, Job. I hear Job want to testify. One of Satan's tactics is to try to elevate us. He took Jesus into a high place. When he elevates us, he causes us to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. He seeks to, uh, to elevate us so that he can humiliate us. We should humble ourselves and wait for God to exalt us instead of listening to Satan's crafty exaltation. On rocky shores, cliffs, we may see the black cormorant as a large diving bird with a long beak and a long neck. He has a hooked neck and a long beak, or rather the other way around, a long neck and a hooked beak. And he seizes his prey, usually a shellfish with a hard outer covering, then flying up with it into the air. Then he lets it fall back on some rock that the shell may be broken in pieces. The great destroyer sometimes deals with those who serve him in a similar way. He's only out to destroy us. So don't allow Satan to take you up to a place that your only way down is a great fall. Don't allow people to blow you up in your, with your ego when they're hiding the pen behind them that they'll use to puncture your ego. It's a heavy penalty. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It is a heavy penalty to pay for not trusting our Lord. It is a heavy penalty to pay. Trust his salvific work on the cross on Calvary that frees us from the penalty of death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Yes, Jesus did die, but early, early in the morning, on the third day, he rose with all power in his hand. There's a song, I will trust my Savior, Jesus. Some of the words goes like this. When my Savior, when, 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 when my darkest doubts befall, trust him when to simply trust him. Seems to be the hardest thing of all. When trusting him seems to be the hardest things of all, I'll trust my Savior, Jesus. Trust him when my strength is small, for I know the shield of Jesus is the safest place of all. Trust in Jesus, the one who died one Friday, but early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Let us close with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your living word that strengthens, guides, and enlightens us. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. As we go through life's journey, let us trust you more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and we pray that you will be blessed by God's word. So long.